If you've ever used AI to create designs for your print-on-demand business, but they simply never seem to sell, then you're not alone. Because despite all the latest advancements, the majority of sellers trying to use AI end up with outputs that look something like this, which are simply never going to sell. The good news is that AI can definitely be a massive unlock for us print-on-demand sellers when it's used properly. And the whole goal of this video is to solve this problem for you once and for all of why AI generates bad outputs what a good output looks like, and then how we can train the model to consistently give us the kind of outputs that have potential to go on to become bestsellers. And the best part of this is that I'm not just going to be giving you some prompts that can generate one or two designs at most. We're gonna be giving you our entire design formula that has been curated into a GPT that you are able to use for whatever niche you're currently selling in. And the first crucial step to this is for us to nail down once and for all what exactly is it that AI just gets wrong when it comes to generating designs that actually have potential to sell? So looking at this first design, there's a lot that we could comment on it. And while it is a cool image, some of the initial like pretty obvious observations here is that it is overly detailed. And we're gonna share in just a moment the exact formula that we follow again and again to create top selling designs. But first, what's wrong with this one is there are too many details going on that just does not print out well Furthermore, there's absolutely no negative space. Now, what negative space means is notice how there's just this big square around the edge. That's how we know that it's not utilizing negative space, which is when we allow the shirt, the fabric behind the design to actually show through. And then finally, just the overuse of ink in this big blocky format is not going to print well, and it's going to feel extremely uncomfortable for whoever, if somebody decides to buy this. Next up, we have another graphic that while, again, it does look pretty cool, and I honestly personally like how it looks kind of 3D, this is not meant to be a t-shirt design at all. It is way too detailed and just not a fit. It's much better suited for a poster. And then our final example is, this is actually based on a best-selling concept, kind of like the ingredients concept that you may have seen be popular on Etsy and Amazon. But again, way too many details, too much going on, the spelling errors that are ripe throughout this. And there's also just no cohesive formatting to it. It's kind of like it all just got thrown onto the t-shirt. And some of the designs are just way too small for a potential buyer to find this interesting. If somebody looks at this design, that design, or this one, they just immediately get overwhelmed and they go on with their day. Now, the million dollar question is why does AI make these bad designs? And it's important that we establish some clear terminology here that when we say bad, almost everything nowadays that AI outputs is pretty incredible in one way or another. So what we really mean when we say bad is that it's simply unsellable, like not fit to go on a t-shirt. So that's the definition that we're going with going forward. And the thing that made this finally click for me was this right here, which is AI in general, such as large models such as ChatGPT or Ideogram, any large image models have been trained off of an immense amount of image data. And it's a unfathomable amount. Like picture every image that has ever been taken or designed by any human for all of time being jammed into one compact black box. Now, obviously there'd be a lot in there. And this includes everything from the Mona Lisa all the way over to some beautiful Ansel Adams portraits. So why does AI give us these outputs? Well, it's designed to be horizontal, meaning it is pretty good at a wide variety of topics, but it is not an expert in any one field. So we can think of horizontal versus vertical using a different analogy. If we were talking about a doctor and there's a patient who feels sick, they are going for you know a common or general issue, then a general like horizontal AI such as ChatGPT can answer a majority of the questions they might have. It's pretty common stuff. And so this is like common cold, common illnesses or symptoms. That's the kind of stuff that it can do well with. But as soon as we're trying to get into something more specific, such as a heart specific issue, that's where you need a cardiologist level of understanding. This is where you need a vertical AI that has been custom trained on everything that a cardiologist knows, because this is too specific for a general AI to understand. Now, the good news is that we are able to fix this by teaching our AI our simple print-on-demand design formula 
so that we finally start generating designs that will actually sell. Now, what is this formula? So the best selling design formula looks something like this. And the really cool part about this is that you've probably picked up on a few of these things here and there, but here it is all in one solidified place. So there's the concept, there's the style of the design, there's the structure and the layout. This is what's the design about? Is it something that anybody would find interesting? Like, is it a catchy phrase or slogan or relatable topic? Then what is the style? Like we're we using watercolors, pastel, line art, that sort of thing. Then the structure, like the back to the ingredients design that we saw earlier. And then the composition elements. So like, what's the hierarchy of the design? And then the print constraints and then the product fit. All in all, it's a lot of details to keep in mind. So this is very specific subject matter that we are asking of the AI. Every time that we try to generate, it is not just pulling on best-selling t-shirts. It is referencing its entire database of information that's been trained on. So it is indirectly referencing what it learned from the Mona Lisa all the way through to these, albeit beautiful, landscape photos, which neither one of these has any place being on a t-shirt. So with all these constraints, it can still be a lot to keep in mind. Like I certainly forget about some of them from time to time. So to simplify things, I took this entire formula along with hundreds of examples of best-selling designs and trained it into a vertical design GPT that is able to be the cardiologist for print-on-demand sellers. And you're able to get this GPT by clicking the link down below. It's completely free. You just enter your email and we'll send it over to you. And now I'm going to walk through a couple of examples and then we're going to go through beyond generating designs, some pretty amazing capabilities that personally, I honestly didn't even plan for it to be able to do, but based on giving it all of this data, it's able to do some pretty shocking stuff. So the first example, and the beauty of this GPT is that it's been trained to work off of the simplest of inputs, meaning you can be as descriptive as you like, but you also don't have to be. You can drop something as general as just fishing niche. So in this example, I went a little bit more specific and I gave it a phrase that I knew worked well in the fishing space. So I said fishing niche, and I wanted to say respect the locals. Then it gave me three different options of how we could generate this design. So it gave me the option for bold and retro minimalist silhouette or a playful cartoon style. Now, the really cool thing is that it is not just picking these at random. It has a database of best-selling print-on-demand styles, and it knows enough to specifically look for which types of styles perform the best for the fishing niche. So here I chose the retro badge style, and then it gives a description of what it's about to do, and then it outputs the design. Now, why this is a fundamentally better design than what we were just looking at earlier is just running through the list. One, the number of details. There's only two different colors. All of the fonts are consistent, and the layout is basically symmetrical. So it uses a great layout, it's a great concept, and it utilizes negative space. That's all of this area is where the shirt is gonna be able to show through. This checks all of the boxes that we were looking for. Now, in this next example, we went way more broad. I just simply said text, which you're able to just click the button at the top. I was personally really happy with the emojis. I thought that was a nice touch, but kind of nerdy, it's okay. Then suggest ideas. So you just say text and it'll ask what kind of design and you don't even have to give it an idea. You can literally just say, give me ideas. And you, <laughs> if you want to get really freaky with it, you can use improper grammar. You can just like mash on the keyboard and somehow it like understands what you're trying to get at. I don't really recommend it though because it is a slippery slope. My typing normally is was pretty good. Now I'm speaking in just acronyms basically. So it's not ideal, but we'll go with it. So it, I said suggest ideas and then it researched some top selling typography styles because we set a text-based design and it came back with research that it had done. And you can also see all the different sites that it's referencing here. And what I love about it is that it's not just looking at one place. It went to out of this one, two, three, four, five. Those are numbers, six, six different sites to research and bring this in to give us this output, which is, a fantastic design considering that I didn't give it any context. I didn't tell it a niche, didn't tell it anything. And it took all of that research and outputted a great text-based design, 
which again uses negative space. It's extremely simple. There's a very clear hierarchy here, but then it gets better. So next I said graphic plus text. And again, just said suggest for me. And it gave five different trending t-shirt styles. And then it outputted this, which the reason I'm most impressed with this is the graphic is one pretty good. Like it utilizes negative space. It even removed the background, but it also came up with a clever phrase and made the graphic align with the phrase because a very subtle aspect of this design is that the frog is looking like sad or uncaffeinated. If you look at their, the eyes, it's easier to tell like on a, a t-shirt. It literally understood the concept that we were going for, which the relatable pun here or joke, whatever, is that I need coffee. I'm not caffeinated. Like, don't talk to me. You're normally sleepy. And it, it captured that in the graphic that it chose, which AI even three months ago was not capable of this. And AI, when you just prompt it normally, does not do this kind of thing. This is the a prime example of the little nuances that general AI misses when we're asking it to prompt for print-on-demand designs. And again, you're able to get access to the GPT completely for free just by clicking the link down below. And just for anybody who's curious, OpenAI doesn't share any of the data with us. We get literally nothing from it. So it's yours to try out. And don't worry, your niche research and data is safe with OpenAI. But the really cool thing is that it doesn't stop there because there are so many other capabilities like I talked about before that I honestly wasn't even planning for it to be able to do when we started making it. But it's just kind of developed or been able to imply these capabilities from all of the data that it's been given. So first and foremost, obviously, it's able to generate designs. We just saw that. Second, research ideas, which we saw a little bit of that. But there's also a research button that we didn't even show in the examples before. So I recommend getting it down below, clicking that and see what it can do for your brand. But one of my personal favorites is it's able to improve your designs. So if you upload one of your, say you go through your whole catalog of all the AI designs you've ever generated that never got any sales, you upload it and say, improve this design. It will analyze it. And then based off of, again, all of its data and its knowledge, it will try to rework your design to make it have like best selling capacity. Next, it does a phenomenal job of this one, which is iterating on bestsellers. When I say iterating on top sellers, this is like one of the most important aspects of growing a print-on-demand brand. When I say iterating on it, I don't mean to just change the color of the frog or change the type of typography. Like say that this design ends up doing really well, which it is a good design, so we'll see. But when I say to iterate, I mean to build off of it to create new potential bestsellers. Now, creating a new potential bestseller is not changing the frog or changing the cup of coffee or adding like an extra thing of steam. What I mean is breaking down the elements of what makes this a bestselling design. So we have a graphic here, then we have typography here, and then we have a relatable phrase that also relates to the graphic. And then going a step further, it's Okay, what kind of phrase is this? Well, it's kind of like sarcasm, humor, and then it has a pretty minimalist graphic with a relatable like cartoon character. That's a lot. That exercise is kind of draining doing it 100 times a day. Good news, we don't have to anymore. We can just outsource thinking to future AI overlords. But that's what I mean by iterating on bestsellers. So don't look for it to just give you basic suggestions to like change the style or typography. It is designed to analyze what works about this and then what are net new concepts that we can come up with based off of this blueprint that we have here. And final note that I want to mention based on the comments and some of the last videos, the whole point of this video and any other content I make is not to debate the morality of or ethics of using AI. That is way above my, my pay grade. I just sell t-shirts. All that I'm here to do is show like AI is here it's a tool. It's only going to get better. Today's the worst that AI is ever going to be. And it is a fantastic tool for us as print on demand sellers. And in my opinion, we can either start using it or kind of get left behind. So that's why I make content like this, like right, wrong, and different. All that I know is you're able to make some pretty incredible stuff and it's going to become more and more of a necessity for print on demand sellers to use it in order to be able to compete. Now, none of that is to say there's not a place for the brand, like unique perspective and the human element. I think that is still so crucial. I think that's becoming even more important in brand building as people are becoming whitewashed to 
you know, all the negative side effects of AI. I think that is like more important than ever. But the fact remains like AI is here. We can either use it or see what happens. I prefer to be on the forward edge of that so that I'm not the one that gets left behind. And hopefully now you aren't either. So with that, thank you for watching. Check out the GPT in the link below and let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you guys. What kind of GPTs would you like to see us make next? I personally love making these. I would happily make them all day long for all the different areas of print on demand business. I think a video in the future that'd be really exciting is building a print on demand business and running it literally end to end using nothing but GPTs. I think that'd be pretty awesome, but you guys let me know down below. What would you guys like to see next? What would be most helpful? And we'll get right on it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.